everybody, Tom here with Stories Across Canada and with my friend Brandon. And uh, Brandon, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, I am 33 years old. I'm from Alberta. I come from a big family, lots of uh, siblings, lots of cousins. Um, yeah. How many siblings and cousins? Just throwing a number oh, out. There's lots. I got. I come from. I have three brothers on my dad's side. I have one brother and two sisters on my mom's side. And I got too many cousins to count. Yeah. And how? What age do you fit in? I am the oldest out of all my siblings. And I believe I'm the oldest out of most of my cousins. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So, Brandon and I were talking earlier. Um, so, kind of the purpose of this is finding how people have been doing the last, you know, year, 18 months or whatever. So, um, you want to tell us anything about the last you know, period of time for you? Yeah. Um, it's, been, it's been a lot of ups and downs, I feel like. Right. Um, obviously, COVID has hard on everybody. Just me personally, just going going through some things, uh, going through some relationship issues. Um, it's been a weird season for me. A lot of my close friends have actually moved away. Um, obviously, COVID had me secluded a little bit, so I actually come from a history of uh, addiction um, and was sober for about seven months, almost seven months. And just during this whole COVID thing, I was going through a pretty bad breakup lost somebody that I really cared about. Um, I was just lonely. I ended up relapsing. Uh, kind of had trouble getting out of out of that hole. Spent a full month inside my, 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 my house pretty much just depressed and you know just, just struggling with with addiction. Um, ended up in the hospital, ended up being rushed to the hospital in an ambulance. I didn't really eat for a month, didn't drink too much water for a month, kind of, I was at the lowest, pretty much the lowest, lowest point of my life, I would say, um, but yeah, I mean, it's not all bad, I've, I've, I've definitely learned some hard lessons through that, I've, I've reconnected with God at the bottom, really, yeah, um, but was it always alcohol, or was it drugs and alcohol? Uh, it was mostly, mostly alcohol, yeah. um, it wasn't... I mean, if drugs were around, and, and I, sometimes I wouldn't say no to it, but mostly it was just alcohol. And and people always ask me, is it okay if I drink around you? Are you does it make you uncomfortable? Whatever. Drinking for me isn't, um, it's not, I don't crave it. I don't even really like it that much. It's more of a emotional thing, like a, an escape from my own reality almost, right? Like just when there's heavy pressure on my emotions or I'm just going through something, it's just a break from my own mind. So, yeah. And did you grow up with alcohol in your family? No, I didn't. Um, no, it was kind of developed. I, I, I went through some trauma as a, as a kid, and that kind of set me on set me on a different path of, of trying to mask emotions. And Do you want to say what the trauma was? Or you yeah, no, that's fine. I've, I've dealt with a lot of it. But I just yeah. I, I went through some, like, sexual abuse and stuff like that when I was around 13, 13 years yeah. old. Yeah. And I just kept it, kept it bottled up until I was – Nobody even knew about it until I was like 18, and, and by then I had developed a, a heavy addiction. A coping mechanism. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And then to the point where then my grandma had, um, she came and she she pretty much knew. She just asked me what happened to you, like, what happened to you, right? Because they see me going down a good path and then yeah. veered off to the side, but yeah. Yeah, and I relate to that too, because that's my story too. I went through um, abuse, um, physical, mental, and sexual abuse as a child too, yeah. right? Yeah. So, and yeah, and you don't, and I was a lot younger, but you just don't know how to cope and you just want to numb everything. You don't want to think about it, right? Yeah. So you just go, I don't want to, and then you feel like your, it was your fault, that what you do wrong, all yeah, those things, right? Saying, yeah. And so fast forward to um, now, and when we were, we had lunch a little bit earlier, so the food was good. We're at Wendell's out in Fort Wangley, so plug in yeah. for Wendell's. But we, um, you know, we were just talking earlier and he was just saying like, like he said earlier, he goes, I wasn't you know, eating totally wasn't drinking enough. And then you were tell, tell us a little bit of your story. Like you told me about like, you needed to get outside. You were just kind of in trouble, right? Yeah. So I was just laying there and I was late. I, w I just wasn't doing well. I was, I was coming off. Of, I was going through withdrawals at this point and laying in my bed and my heart is pounding out of my chest. Uh, I'm sweating. I'm feeling, feeling faint. And I just felt myself 
almost like my body was giving out. I just felt myself kind of sink into the bed. And I, I just, my vision started closing in, my heart's pounding. And I just saw, it was just weird. Like I just, all I could see was a, was black and a little flicker of light, almost like a flame. Right. And, and it was really eerie, but it was also really, it was an eerie peaceful. You know, does that make sense? Yeah, like yeah. it was an eerie peaceful. And I, I just knew I was in trouble and I, I got up and I ran for the door and I didn't make, I, I ended up passing out on the floor and I just felt like God was telling me that it isn't over. Like I, I was still in blackness and unconscious, but like I was there for a while and just get up. It's not over. And so I got, I managed to get up somehow, ran and put my shoes on, went, ran outside, called 911, hit, hit the deck again outside and, um, Ended up in the ambulance, getting rushed to the hospital. I was so dehydrated that they couldn't find my veins. My veins were all closed up. Like I had zero water for a month, wow. zero food or anything like that. Um, and they couldn't get an IV in me. They couldn't even get it in until like probably half an hour when I was in the hospital. They kept poking me. But, uh, yeah. yeah. Now you mentioned about uh, God. So did you? Were you grown up in a home with faith? I was. Yeah. My my grandma and my grandpa were Christians. Um, but I would say that the house that I lived, that I grew up in, where they 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 believed in God, but they weren't necessarily following. Yeah, yeah. So I always knew of Him, but I would I didn't have a relationship with Him. Does that make sense? that make sense until yeah. maybe I was twenty twenty two ish? Yeah. And that's when you went into a faith based recovery program. It was. It was the first time I went into a faith based program. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> um, so in the midst of this, your you told me you're a surveyor. I am, yeah. Now, in the midst of like going through this, it was caused by a heartache through a girl that you, your girlfriend? The, this recent time? Yeah. Yeah, it was. A combination of things. A combination of things, yeah. Now, were but you working? I was, yeah. Yeah. Well, not at that time, though. Like, I, when I was in the relapse, I wasn't, I wasn't working. Yeah. But you're still, you still have that same job? Yeah. Okay. So they were, you're able to yeah. deal with health issues. And... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And um, I don't know, is there anything? Like, I know sometimes when we, like, the reason we're doing this is there's, we work through difficult times and we're dealing with anxiety or stress or trauma. And, and I know in the midst of it, it's hard to see anything positive, but when we come out of it, I think our stories coming through it are, are helpful for us and for others. Yeah. So anything, um, did you have people around? Not really. No. no. Like I said, it was a weird year. A lot of people were yeah. Yeah. So you told me too, the one of the things he likes, uh, you like to work out? I do. Yeah. So yeah. that gives you, it's physical good, but it's mentally yeah. good too? Yeah. It's, it's, it's been really crucial for my mental health. It just kind of keeps me grounded. I feel like starts my day off well. Yeah. I struggle sometimes with, with my emotions and depression and stuff like that. So it kind of kicks me off to a good start of the day. Now, do you have people now that you can reach out to? I do. I've been, I've been building more community around me because I feel like that was one of the things I found myself secluding myself a lot. Right, and didn't have a lot of people around me, and just just wasn't wasn't yeah, I wasn't surrounding myself with people. So, and I think we were talking earlier. The hard thing is, is when you're feeling like you're in that those places, you don't want to be around people because not that people will be nice and supportive, but you feel you're judging yourself, yeah, and you feel like crap, yeah, and you feel that people are just gonna think you're another time, another relapse, another waste of whatever, exactly. right? Yeah. And, and I was saying to him, I said, that's one of the hard things to get over saying, like, you just got to come to your senses and go, okay, no, I need, I need anybody, someone to reach out with. If it's somebody I know, or if it's a hotline or something like that. So, so that was just this year. That was this year yeah. yeah. So how are you doing now? I'm doing good. Like I said, I, I when I was at the bottom, I had no, no one else to look but up, right? So, yeah. It's just been, it's a, it's a battle every day, but just finding little things that kind of give me motivation and give me happiness. And it's a journey, right? And you're an artist. So as we're preparing this, he, he helped me educate me with rap and hip hop are the same thing. So I'm just yeah. old, but so you did hip hop and yeah. that was something that you, I've heard some of your stuff. It's great. Yeah, thank you. And I don't even understand it, but I just like, I like <laughs> you and I like it. Right. Yeah, so, you. but you were saying you haven't done that for a while. Yeah, I mean, I just haven't had uh, the fire like I used to have, or the motivation really. Is it is it more like I'm gonna use? I'm gonna prove I don't know a lot. Is when you do hip hop and that it's it's freestyle. 
Uh, no, like a lot of my stuff's written. Okay. Yeah. So it's not like a spoken word or whatever. No, like I, I have some spoken words, but even spoken words I have written. Yeah. 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 So that's good. Okay. Yeah. So are you hoping to get back to that? I am. Yeah. For me, it's always been expression, right? Like yeah. I, haven't been, I, I haven't been the best at expressing myself, yeah. but when I put words to paper and I get in front of a microphone, then yeah. that's when everything kind of comes out. So it's more, it's just real for me. Yeah. So I love that. I, I, I haven't seen Brandon probably several years. Yeah. And uh, so we decided to hook up in Fort Langley, which was great. Yeah. And again, I follow him on Instagram. Uh, we'll share the links later, but um I don't know. I just love. I just love his stuff. And I told. I told him when I would see people like this, and I know a bit of their backstory. But you're now catching up now, and and again, we're working through uh, challenges and stuff. So, so what would you? What would be advice you give to somebody who's dealing with say depression or mental health or addiction? What would you say? My advice would be to surround yourself with people that uplift you. Always reach out if you're if you're struggling. Um, it's, it's, you're not in it alone. I know it feels like a lonely feeling, but, but you're not, there's lots of people going through the same thing. Yeah. yeah just, just surround yourself with, with good people. So the last thing, and he may say no to this. So he's smiling at me now. I'm going to go, oh, you're, you bought me a coffee for this. But, um, one of the things I was thinking of, uh, if you're, if you're open to do this, and again, you can say no, do you want to leave us with uh, a little, something you've written sure i don't I'll i don't do that, beats. i don't i haven't done it in a long time but, but yeah. I'll, I'll try i won't it. laugh i'll just have a straight face yeah so. you might have to edit that the end out if i miss up my words but okay all right. i take a look around like thank you lord i really made it i made it through the storms through the trials tribulation long road ahead lord i pray you give me patience because my demons chose to face him and you taught me to embrace him long far cry from perfect but you love it made me worth it chance after chance even though i don't deserve it i'm single now lord and i'll admit i'm still hurting trying to change the script before they close in all the curtains. Awesome. Dude, high five. And uh, thank you, everybody. Um, <laughs> we'll talk to you next time. Still live, but I'll have to edit that. So now, see, this is my issue. I just got a new...